my friends. It is Sunday, May 16th, 2021. But whenever you're listening to this, I hope it finds you well and thriving. In this episode, I share with you what I experienced in a group hypnosis session yesterday. My ultimate hope would be that it strikes you as being as meaningful and powerful and beautiful as I experienced it to be. But more realistically, at least I can trust that this might serve as encouragement for you to experience for yourself what is there to be experienced as firsthand experiences are almost always the most life-changing. I want this episode to reflect to you how interconnected we are, how loved we are, how meaningful our experience can be. Now, if you're listening to this on Spotify, you'll hear a song for the outro. If you're listening on any other platform, I'll include a link in the show notes uh, for you to listen to the song. This song came up synchronistically in my listening queue this afternoon. I thought it fit in just beautifully. Perfect. All right, guys, enjoy. Much love. Okay, I am I have been completely just blown away by some synchronicities. You might call them coincidences, but I just really want to tell you about this fantastic experience I had yesterday. Uh, I encourage you to go to payitforwardhypnosis.com. Click on the membership tab, and that will give you information about how to experience these group hypnosis sessions by yourself. But you've heard me talk about Courtney Starkey over and over again, and I actually have her scheduled to come onto the podcast for an interview, but I can't wait. I just want to tell you about this amazing hypnosis I had with a group. So yeah, it's not one-on-one. Um... But it was so strong, so powerful. It was my first time to do a group hypnosis with her that I that I believe. And I just want to take you through briefly. Well, I guess it's, there's nothing brief about it. I want to take you through what was said and what I experienced. Okay, so first of all, so again, this was May 15th, 2021. So one of the first questions that the facilitator, Courtney, was asking um, with the spirit friends that we invited invited in, what would they like to share with you, be it wisdom or energy or something different? So I said to my recorder, because we were all muted, no one can hear you or, or see you, so I rec- voiced this into my recorder and then transcribed it this afternoon. I'm seeing a white rabbit again. And I say again here because I had previous hypnosis sessions one-on-one with different practitioners in which I, I saw a rabbit as the spirit animal that came in. This one is alert with brown eyes. It's a white rabbit with grayish coloring grayish spots. It seems much more relaxed than previous times. It's not alert in the sense that it's sensing danger. So I'm going to ask the rabbit what it has for me today. And what came through was the message to go slow and enjoy the scenery because even though like a rabbit, you're capable of hopping and making leaps and bounds making progress as you see it, anyone, rabbits included, would get exhausted by doing that continuously. You have to have time to recuperate, to collect yourself and your energy, and to receive. Sometimes when you're going so quickly, it can be difficult to capture the beauty around you. So go slowly and enjoy. Take time to be still. We, speaking for the rabbits, don't expend energy foolishly. We're one with nature and we invite you to be one of us. 
Rabbits are very cuddly and loving, very family-centered. All right, then the facilitator invited, uh, invited us to go to a place of healing, a restoration, and I began to see purple. And I, I say that to mention that this is also the beginning of the Pleiades portal, I believe, starts today. And that is all about purple energy. I'll be sure to include an article uh, from, I believe it is Forever Conscious, about the Pleiades energy and how that's all about purple. So I read that today. So that was a very synchronistic uh, example of what I'm talking about. Okay, so uh, Courtney asked us to go to a place of healing, of restoration. I began to see purple. She asked us to receive wonderful energy, peaceful, loving energy. And I saw that that purple was being surrounded by yellow. And then just ask your soul, what is a place that it loves that is very restorative? She suggested maybe we would end up in a meadow or with a tree or somewhere completely different. And she gave us this uh, deepener to go deeper into a relaxed state. And when she said to be there now, feel into what your heart is drawn to. Uh, what is this energy that you're meant to receive from this beautiful place? So what I told into my recorder is that when I'm visualizing, well, at first I thought I'd be in my traditional mountain retreat near an ocean, but I found myself in a forest and it's a sunny day, but there are so many trees that it's just you know, the sunshine's just slanting in through the branches up top and that the trees are very tall and slender. Maybe they're pine trees. And I will mention here that pine trees is significant. If you've heard um, my session with, um, oh gosh, Megan McHugh, I'm wondering now if that was just a Patreon bonus, but pine trees came in very prominently in that. Okay. Going back to this, uh, there's plenty of room at the floor of the forest, and I get this sense when I got, okay, so I was kind of taken back in time. What came to mind was when people from Europe, these refugees from Nazi invasion, how many of them ran to the trees for their solace and comfort and for protection. I got the sense that. The forest was a place of strength for them. It was there to protect them and keep them. They were serenaded with bird song. There was love here. Not hatred for who they are, but sunshine, birds, community. They hold close to one another in this forest. There's campfire and music and song. And you might think they'd be afraid of being found, at least, uh, but in this magical place that I am in today, they're free to be themselves here, to live naturally. There are pine needles all over the ground, creating a soft forest floor. The air is fresh and crisp. It's alive. Courtney then asked us, well, she said, Normally, I ask for your soul to share with you the energy of your soul's favorite color in the spirit realm. She wanted to make it a little different and said, maybe that beautiful color that comes to you will be by way of flower or fairy or crystal or something different that is very colorful. So she said, whenever you are ready, invite in something that is very magical, very powerful, that carries your soul's favorite color. Invite that being, that spirit friend, to share that energy of that color with you. So I, I already had an idea it might be yellow. And what came to mind was a daisy with the yellow center and the white petals. And that uh, was or is my mother-in-law Nancy's favorite flower. So yeah, the yellow is framed by the white petals. The center is yellow, and it spoke of being life energy. It's the color of love, 
And to me in that moment, it was very beautiful. Um, so then Courtney said, whenever you're ready, inviting a spirit friend, it may be a spirit animal or a plant or something different, but from your heart, inviting in a spirit friend is part of this magical healing restorative place. And let's just see what spirit friend comes to you and that you can ask of this friend, any of your higher wisdom questions, see what they'd like to share with you, whether it's wisdom or energy or anything else. So what I saw was a deer, and I thought that was kind of amusing because, right, didn't we just see a rabbit earlier? And so I'm getting the idea of thumb, Thumper and Bambi. So I sensed a dawn, a deer, I'm sorry, a deer, a fawn, a spotted fawn approaching. And I said into my recorder, I'm going to ask, what am I to do with the feedback I got from a one-star rating from my book? So that was my higher wisdom question. <laughs> that might not seem very higher wisdom. But um, earlier that day, earlier yesterday, I had gone on to Goodreads, and I only had one review of my book, Sandra, A Healing Reimagining of the Babysitter from Hell. And it was a one star. And part of me was crushed. And another part of me, I think, was actually more mature in that I was like, not every book's going to be for everybody. And this was just not for her. And so and part of me was proud of myself for how much I've <laughs> grown. And then another part was still. Like, I feel like maybe I should be crushed. Is there something I should be doing with this feeling, this emotion, this disappointment? Yeah. So that was the question I asked. And let me get back to my, find my place in my notes here. <laughs> okay. So what I wrote, I just get the sense that the deer is very gentle. It's not aggressive. It doesn't have an offensive stance or an offensive horn like a rhino where it would go charging, and it's not confrontational. The deer is telling me to just sniff it out, see it, acknowledge it, and then continue on. It's not for me. I then asked the deer, this fawn, Bambi, if you will, what should I be doing next in life? I want my heart to be really open to love others and have that miracle happen and to have fun in my life. And the message that came through was trust. Like Bambi has thumper. And so, yes, it went there. Like Bambi has thumper. You have a community to rely on to help you learn the ropes of the forest without your mother and father. So even if there were no parental um, examples, there were no, what's the word I'm looking for? There were no role models uh, modeling to you how to best go through life and handle your emotions. Uh, you have this community to rely on to help you learn the ropes of the forest. There, there is beauty to be seen and experienced and felt. That's why you're here. Life is not a test or drudgery or torture. You're here to love and to soak in and not to do battle but to accept, and there's a strength in that. So meanwhile, back at the ranch, <laughs> Courtney is saying, when it comes to plants, you can breathe out, release that carbon dioxide, and the plants happily receive that, and they turn it into something that is of benefit to you. They turn it into oxygen. So if we wanted to, she told us we can invite in a special plant or a team of plants to help 
release whatever it is we're meant to release today that will be of benefit to get rid of. We can send that to those plants and invite them to turn it into something loving, healing, wonderful. And then the plants or team of plants can send that to you if you'd like to receive whatever wonderful energy they turned that stuff you wanted to release into, right? So she said, if you'd like to accept that invitation, just beginning now that process of releasing, sending that energy to them and receiving the wonderful energy that they are sending to you as a result. So here's what I told my phone, <clears throat> my recorder. I am releasing resentment and my anger that seethes. And I don't know if you can hear me because of freckles, nails against the floor. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to repeat that. So I'm releasing resentment and my anger that seethes. I'm releasing grudges. I'm releasing toxic energy, defeatist thoughts. And I'm putting all that stuff I'm wanting to release, that energy, on the soft, soft grass that's waving and very bouncy under my hands. So very green there in this meditation. So I'm just releasing that through my hands into the grass. And I could sense like it's sending a, a little shock wave of electric tingle, an invigorating tingle through the grass, through this network of grass. And I can feel my hands tingling as well at that moment. And I see the daisies releasing to me. And what they were sending to me was that sunshine that it was, that it embodies, that it symbolizes. I'm receiving the sunshine, the joy, the fun, the light. And it emanates in rays of purity, of clarity. And that's what I was envisioning with the little, um, the petals of white. It symbolized purity and clarity to me. So it was emanating in rays of purity and clarity. And before this hypnosis session had started in earnest, there was one lady who had talked about how um, she brings plants into her meditations. Uh, she will either physically do it or just envision putting her arms around a tree and that her higher self is on the other side of the tree. And I guess, I mean, I'm probably getting this wrong, but putting this higher self puts its arms around you and brings you through the tree as a, a, a purifying process. And so that's what I had heard. And so I brought that into this part of my session. So we have the flower. I said, I also want to hug that tree. So I wrap my arms around a pine and I allow my higher self to pull me in through a tree to purify me to the other side into its arms. So as I was doing this, the tree seemed to become this portal all of a sudden. And kind of like the rings of a tree, um, I was seeing that as this portal. I don't know if that makes sense. And I got the download or the message that growth can seem slow, but it's steady in that it happens. In some years, sure, there's less growth than others, but it is alive. And even in periods of drought, it is supported. It is um, maintained. It is acknowledged. It is part of the family of trees of this beautiful network that the hypnosis group had also discussed before, prior to this, how um, Courtney had mentioned that in this network of trees, say there is drought, the trees that are closer to the water source will actually pull and, and kind of pass that along the network to the trees that are further along. So that's kind of what I was thinking of as well as I was bringing that into my meditation. So uh, she continued, Courtney did, whenever you're ready, go ahead and ask, what is for you 
the easiest, best way to communicate with these friends, whether it is uh, these uh, in other realms or here in the earth realm, your plants, your animals, for you, what is the best, easiest way to communicate with them? And she invited us to just see you, what they had to share, and to try it out, to rec- uh, to try it out, test it, and to ask them questions if we had any about that process. So after being, you know, silent and quiet a moment, what I saw was me putting my hands on a tree's bark. And I got the sense that in a way, just like the roots draw up water and moisture and nutrients from the earth, I too can draw upon a vast reservoir of knowledge and instant connection with the earth, my spirit friends, plants. And I can do this visually as well and call upon specific friends if I want. The download was saying, everyone knows the language of the tree. It's a universal language of love and connectivity, of being anchored and growing and being with the seasons. There's foliage in the spring. You lose that during the fall. You have the syrup, you know, the the life force that rises in certain parts of the year, and then it conserves it during others. They're the symbol of change and non-change all at the same time. Animals look to it as well and understand. So I can put my hands around the bark of the tree and invoke ancient wisdom, a higher truths, love from Mother Earth, who I was um, in this download, says Mother Earth knows the mystery of why I'm here at this time. So I kind of envisioned myself as a tree, raising my arms to the sky above, to the unknown, the unsure, the tumultuous wind, and just allowing myself to be within that unknown and just experience grace while still being grounded with the roots. I I just felt it and it was beautiful for me to experience. Uh, Courtney continued. She said, let's play and have a little fun here and see what happens. Earlier, we were talking about grounding or connecting in whatever way is best for you. So ask, have your soul ask your spirit friends, what is the best way for you to quote ground or connect or center in the way that is best for you? So see what they recommend and then practice it, try it, feel it, and feel how you feel when you are connecting in this way. So what came to me is I envisioned a sun and I saw it moving from the top of my head down into my heart space and just rotating there. And I felt the invitation to put my hands up against my chest, up to that spinning sun there in my heart space, and just breathe. Breathe in and imagine that I'm breathing in universe and the space around that sun. And then it's slowly swirling in my heart space. And at the center is the sun, the anchor. Everything is still and alive with movement all at the same time. So I can envision that solar system, of, if you will, into a freeze frame. I imagine it slowly coming to a stall, doing a freeze frame where everything is there around the sun. And then uh, when I release my breath, I can sense it, um, everything, the space rotating the opposite way. And I can feel my hands warm (laughs) against my chest, uh, envisioning um, holding them up to the sun's warmth there. Now, this is interesting. Uh, Courtney said, from this energy of connection that is specific to you, let's repeat what we did earlier. And from this energetic connected space, 
Now reach out again to your plants, your animals, your other friends. Communicate from th with them from this energy space and just see if it feels the same. Does it feel different? Test it out. See how it goes, how it feels. And what I thought was so fascinating is that there was nothing. <laughs> there was nothing. That, that connection was, uh, was lost, was put on pause. There was nothing. And so afterwards, and we're not quite done with the hypnosis session, but I'll just skip forward to afterwards. I put it out there. I'm like, okay, Courtney, you know how you asked, see how it's different if it is at all? I'm like, it was different. I couldn't connect anymore to the plants or any spirit animals, any team members. <laughs> and there was one other lady that said that it was the same for her as well. So I'm interested. Courtney said that she's going to have to go through the recording herself and see uh, when she does it herself, if that changes the connection. So anyway, I was... Uh, a little confused, but uh, I just went with it. I, I, yeah, I felt nothing. So I just waited until she went on to the next part. She said, now, whenever you're ready, if you would like, let's go on an adventure. And April loves adventures, <laughs> I'll just say. She said, all you need to do is invite either an animal or a flower. Let's just see who shows up. And inviting now a spirit animal or a spirit flower. And what I began to see was a white horse with wings. She said, she continued, and if it's an animal that came in, begin focusing very deeply, very intently on their eyes. Feeling deeply into their eyes. So again, I'm telling my voice recorder, I'm seeing a white horse with wings, no horn. And it has a masculine energy, I think. Very still and quiet, but powerful. Okay. So Courtney, because this is a group hypnosis session and she's not knowing what you're doing, she's continuing on. She says, whether it's the flower center or the animal's eyes, this can be a portal that can take you wherever this spirit friend would like to take you on the other side of that portal. And you can be shown whatever it is that they would like to show you. So when you're ready, energetically move into the portal of the flower or the portal of the eyes, flowing through the portal to the other side to see and experience what this friend would like to share with you. Enjoy. So this was, this is where it gets so, so powerful. So this Pegasus is I, <clears throat> because it had the black people. And the iris was this beautiful sky. I don't know about sky, but beautiful blue with glittery, silvery white glitter throughout it, like a beautiful blue marble, maybe. So anyway, I entered the portal of this eye, and it was just blue and glitter sparkle and stepping Onto the, into the other side, I saw a paradise. There were mountains in the far distance. In my mind's eye, I was seeing pastures. The sun was getting a little low in the sky, so the sunlight was gentle. And I realized that the um, Pegasus, the horse with wings, is there next to me and that I'm holding his bridle. I get the... I ask him, I get the download, and then I ask him, are you actually Freckles? Now, Freckles is my dog <laughs> that I love so much. She is, she had just, we celebrated her 15th birthday on April 30th. And she has been on a slow decline. Some days it doesn't seem all that slow. And been trying to figure out what would be the humane thing to do? Uh, is she's she's still eating and wagging her tail. She doesn't seem to be in a lot of pain. I had asked the universe to just give you some background here. I had asked the universe this time that to let 
Freckles choose her own time to to leave, to expire, to transition. Because uh, I've had to put, you know, euthanized dogs before, and it wasn't. I just wanted this time to be Freckles' call, right? So that's where I am with this process. So I asked, I got the sense that this was actually the spirit of Freckles. And the answer that came back was yes. And I said, Freckles, is there another name you go by? What is your soul's name? And then I got the name Richard. And then I got a fancier name. Osalt, and I was having pr- trouble pronouncing it, but I spelt it out into my phone, O S O L T. And you can hear me on the recording. I was trying to like pronounce it. I was having trouble, as though it wasn't quite English or what something I was very comfortable with. And the, so finally, I said, "May I call you O?" <laughs> and the answer was yes. So I said, Richard, Richard was salt. Why have you brought me here? And then I got the feeling that the reason was to see the landscape where he lives, where he's from. And he says, this is the place where he resides, even as he's experiencing a lifetime as freckles. He is happy, he is strong, and yes, he is damn beautiful. (laughs) I loved that part. He is okay. There's nothing that can change that. In this home, serenity and magic will never be changed or taken away or moved. Being led out to pasture is an apt description because no matter which side, he's there. So post a hypnosis session, the wording seems a little strange to me, but that's that's what I said into the microphone. (laughs) Being led out to pasture is an apt description because no matter which side, he's there. He's there in his happy place. And all I could say in that moment was, Thank you. I needed to that I needed that reassurance, that affirmation that Freckles is okay. She's good no matter what happens. So of course, uh, Courtney is unaware of what's going on inside my head. <laughs> so she continues on. <clears throat> saying, of course, the earth realm is very magical, very powerful as well. Let's ask your spirit friend where in the earth realm is your access to magic. It may be a park near your house. It could be your favorite chair in your house. Ask your spirit friends what places are most magical in the earth realm for you to connect with them with ease and see what places they show you. So sitting with that, what I got was uh, the ocean. And I already pretty much knew that just because I'm a cancer, I am a water sign, and I love the ocean. The ocean is one of my happy places, even if I I don't go very often, but um, just thinking about the ocean can be pretty calming. So I got the ocean, of course. And now this time I was also shown my favorite tree in the backyard. And I will pause here to give you some more background information. I listened to Gabrielle Ginter's podcast called My Leap of Faith. And she had since October of last year been see she had been seeing a grid, a matrix. Uh, especially at this one place out on the cliffs where she lives near San Diego. Um, But then more places other than that, but really strongly here at the, at the cliffs. And for the longest time, she was wanting more information, right? Like we all would. 
she knew that each of these little centers within this matrix, this grid, uh, were individual people, energies. Um, yeah, so, but she didn't know how to activate it. And what had finally come to her, and I strongly recommend that you listen to her latest podcast because I'm sure I'm <laughs> completely messing this up and getting it wrong. But the download that she got was that to bury a crystal in the earth and then to sit on the earth above that crystal. And what you could do if you wanted to be a part of this diamond, I can't remember what it is, but this diamond grid, this matrix, then you can invite God, source, energy, you know, down through your crown chakra, down, down through all the chakras, through your root chakra, into, and visualize it going into, through this crystal and down into the earth down, down deep into the earth where it wraps around the core of the sun, uh, the core of the earth, and then uh, returns back up. It goes up through the crystal, becoming very crystalline, very pure, very loving energy. And so up through that crystal, up through your root chakra, back up to your heart space, your heart chakra, at which point it then gets transmitted outward as uh, to create your part of this grid, this fantastic energy for good. So I'm, again, I'm probably messing that up completely, but that's, the visualization I got, I found it to be very beautiful. And so I had done that last week. I had grabbed one of my crystals, uh, put it by my, buried it by my tree in the backyard. And so that way, whenever I'm sitting there, I can actually lean against the tree and be doing all of this at the same time. So, um, so in this visualization here in this hypnosis session, it was telling me, yes, by your favorite tree in the backyard, that's a good place. That's powerful. Um, and then I got the image of just holding a stick. <laughs> so I got the message that just as Moses had held a rod and it budded, somehow just holding a stick, it can be uh, a really a strong place for me to connect. Um, also, just lying down on the earth and looking up uh, through at the bows of any tree would be fantastic. And that looking at the moon is great too. So again, none of that was really new information apart from the stick. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was just confirmation. Just keep doing what I'm doing as far as that. So Courtney was continuing on. She said, whenever you're ready, you invite your spirit friends, could be plants, animals, fairies, or something completely different. Invite them to come in even more strongly now. It could be the same spirit friends that have been with you in this session, or it could be new spirit friends just now coming in. But just invite them to come in even more strongly now. And she said that this would be our final exercise of the day. Invite them to share with you whatever it is that they want to share with you today. This is beautiful. I got, <laughs> I got the sensation of... Uh, freckles or assaults or Richard, this Pegasus um, nudging me with her nose against my shoulder. So I look at her and I get the message, let's run. So I'm running across the pasture with assault. We're yipping and hollering. We're both feeling free. And as I run, I start to turn into a Pegasus as well. We look at each other and then we take off. We're flying with our powerful wings and we're flying towards the moon because I get the sense that here in this place, uh, the moon is very important. 
very, very important here. So we're flying towards that. And again, all I could say in that moment was thank you. It was just such a beautiful, beautiful experience. And basically that was all of um, the hypnosis session for the day. Um, so what I wanted to do I wanted to share that with you, first of all, because I think it's just beautiful in and of itself. But before I hit re started recording, I was like, you know what? I meant, I had the intention of looking up the word usult uh, online to see what it could mean. So, I've, you know, usually the pattern has been that I don't think that there's a pattern or there's no meaning and that there is absolutely a huge connection. So I looked up the word assault and there was only one, one result internet for the internet search. And I wanted to kind of tell you what it was. It gave me a, so there was only one internet search that made any sense whatsoever. Uh, the rest were for, uh, it, it was just nonsensical. So this, it said four heavenly kings okay it was it was usult is the name of one of the four heavenly kings and so i look it up and i'm looking at the website now of the four the one that is named usult and i'm probably totally misspelling it but the o's have the two dots above each of them so I, it's escaping me what those are called but yeah the two dots above each of the O's, O-S-O-L team. And this is the name of the King of the South. So the four directions. And those who have been following me for a while know that my whole start with the Akashic Records, I kept getting the number four and how four was connected to justice. And I've been on the search for the connection ever since. But so this is interesting in that it brings in the four directions again. Usult was the king of the south and the one who causes good growth of roots. So I love that, right? Because like this whole time I'm getting this uh, visualization of the tree and the groundedness and the connectivity. So good growth of roots. His color that he is uh associated with is guess what blue it's blue i thought that was so cool because in this life freckles is female and she has very warm brown eyes there are no blue eyes and uh, courtney had asked me well what color are freckles eyes now and i i said they're like a cinnamon brown i love them um, so it was kind of interesting, the blue, and now that I'm on this Wikipedia page about the four heavenly kings, it kind of makes sense. And I will also say that after having mentioned my Pegasus that came through, there were at least, I think three other, I could be wrong, but there were two or three other people within the group who also had a Pegasus come in, one of which was also had blue eyes and that was her portal. Now, this is nothing that we mentioned like ahead of time saying, okay gang, we're gonna try and visualize a Pegasus with blue eyes. There's nothing of this sort. So it is so cool how what comes to you is also kind of given to others and just as reinforcement kind of, right? That it means something. It's no, I almost said not just your imagination. Your imagination can be powerful. It's so powerful. But we have a tendency to dismiss it sometimes. And so this kind of confirmation, like there is something to this. Pay attention. It means something. So I just find it so cool that this king of the south is associated with the color blue. His symbol is the sword. And what else? And I'm looking at the pictures of statues of him and he has a blue body <laughs> and it's a very vibrant blue. So I think that is so, so fascinating. Ah, golly, what else? 
The four heavenly kings, according to this Wikipedia article, are four Buddhist gods, each of whom is believed to watch over one cardinal direction of the world. In Chinese mythology, they are known collectively as the Feng Tiao Yu Shun, uh, meaning good climate, or Si Da Tian Wang. And I really apologize for my pronunciation, but literally means four great heavenly kings. I'm not even going to attempt the ancient, ancient Sanskrit, Sanskrit language, but they are a standard component of Chinese Buddhist temples. I had no idea. It's so cool. So in uh, Sanskrit, it's also known as the, they're known as the guardians of the world. So I, I thought that is so cool. Now let me give you some background on freckles. I love freckles. She is not one, however, who is a lap dog. I've had some really huge uh, pit bulls. One who, uh, this one pit bull in particular, her name was um, Rebel, and she thought she was a, a, <laughs> a lap dog. And so you can kind of start to lose feeling in your lap because she was so heavy. But that's where she needed to be. She needed to be touching you and up against you at all times. And Freckles uh, was on the opposite side. She enjoys her space. And so it's been somewhat challenging, hoping that she knows that she's loved, whereas, whereas I know she doesn't enjoy being really petted or you know, brought close. She enjoys her, her space, her alone time. She seems very regal and gentle, uh, but yes, she's not one of those that uh, wants to be in your face and in your space. But yeah, so regal has been a word that I have used many times. And so for me to realize that she is or shares the same energy of one of the guardians of the world named Osult, probably still mis mispronouncing it, but yeah, this very regal, king-like energy. And I have to mention this too. I apologize for rambling. <laughs> I, I, this may seem so disjointed, but it's just coming to me where you have all these little bits of information that come to you. I had had a dream about freckles, probably in January when she's first started really going downhill health-wise. And in my dream, she had given me a high five with her paws. Like her, she gave me a high five with her paws against my hands. And she had said something and I couldn't even remember what it was that she said. And my husband joked, up, joked and piped up something I can't remember what he said, but in Freckles' words, but the tone of voice he used was so like, I'm like, whatever she said, that was the voice that she used. It was, it's funny because, you know, she's female, but in my dream, she definitely had a, like a male cartoonish voice. <laughs> like, let's, like, we got this, love you, or whatever it was that she said, it was in a a very cartoonish male voice. And so we had been joking for a while now that, uh, so whenever my husband says anything as though it's coming from freckles, it's in a, a goofy uh, male voice. And yeah, I just, I love how all of this is coming together. And I just know that there's so much more here that I need to, uh, soak in and that there's a lot here I'm not even seeing yet. So a lot of the message in the hypnosis session had been, right, at least at the beginning, don't be offensive, be gentle. Um, just don't even engage, right? Remember that's, that's what I was kind of told. Um, 
and with with the deer and then you know with jet with freckles being a very gentle soul and very regal and then i have this information now about Osult being one of the protect, four protectors of the world. And he has the, the symbol of the sword. I know that there's something here that I can't quite grasp because I feel like it's one of those things where we have a sense of duality. It's either or. Um, it's either good or bad. It's either peace or war. And... I just have a feeling that in another dimension that their idea of war is different. I mean, I think it's just such a strong love that it's such a strong love that the only way we're able to grasp it is in offensive terms, not offensive as in making us cringe but offensive as in defensive offensive uh posturing with with a sword there is so much strength there's so much power in strength and you don't even have to go to battle right if if you're strong because people don't even attempt to fight you because you are so strong. And I'm thinking that that's how love is. It's so damn powerful that, yeah, I think we associate it with swords and battle and war. And I just don't think we're getting the complete picture quite yet. So I think it can be both. I think it can be very peaceful and non-engaging and yet at the same time very powerful, very protective, very safe place to be. And I'm just thankful for Freckles to be with me in this experience, in this human experience of mine and I just find it so reassuring that no matter where she is or is experiencing on this plane she is a magical powerful being that will always be okay she's gonna always be fine and I am too I'm gonna be okay yeah so um, I know there was a lot more I wanted to say, but let me just go over my notes real quick, make sure. I think that's probably it for now. I did want to close out that after this hypnosis session, it was uh, com completed with a, <clears throat> sorry, I've been talking so much. Let me take a drink. Um, there was what's called a psychometry exercise. And how this works, this was my very first time to do it. What happens is that you put an item in your right hand, and this has to be an item that you've spent a lot of time with, that's often on your body, that you wear it often, or it's close to you. It has like a lot of your energy, a lot of your essence imbued into this item, right? So you hold this item in your right hand and hold it up to the uh, camera of your computer so that the Zoom, the group on Zoom can see it. And then you hold out your left hand as well, but it's empty. So you're holding out both hands, your item in your right hand, your left hand is empty because your left hand is your receiving hand. Like 5% of your attention you keep on your right hand just like basically enough to keep it stable so that your item doesn't fall out of your hand and that you're keeping it within sight of the zoom camera most of your attention the other 95 percent of your attention is supposed to be directed toward your empty left hand you get paired off and you look at your partner's item that they have in their right hand and 
you get led through a like a three minute um, hypnosis, I guess you could say, uh, session, a little mini session, and you are trying to receive your partner's items, energy into your left hand this whole time. And then afterwards, you, you know, you close your hands, you close your eyes, and you allow to come up, whatever comes up. And I'm not going to tell you what I said about uh, my partner's items, because even though I'm sure she would have no problem whatsoever about me telling you what her item was about, uh, I don't have her permission, her explicit permission. So I'm just going to, I guess, tell you what she said about my item. What, and I'll tell you, first of all, what my item was. My item was the James Avery butterfly ring that I purchased probably in 2015. Yeah, 2015. This was a ring that I had seen, I don't know, probably for more than a decade. Loved it, but I had always thought it was a little, it was a little, a lot too much money. And I wasn't going to afford it. Well, I had gotten divorced and I was like, you know, I'm going to just do it. I'm going to buy this ring. And I think at the time it was probably $75, $110. I'm not sure. But it was definitely splurging. I'm going to buy this ring that I've wanted for as long as I can remember and just do it. I'm going to buy it, do it for me. And so... This ring, I, I wear it pretty often. And I'll tell you how attached I am to it. I was wearing it so that even when my daughter was younger and I would be putting her into her car seat, my ring would kind of uh, sometimes cut at her. <laughs> I, felt so, I felt so bad about admitting this. But, you know, it's, it doesn't lay flat. The wings are up. But... I love it so much. I never stopped wearing it, <laughs> even then. So I know, bad, bad mom. But so that was what was in my hand. And this lady I'm partnered with, she knows nothing really of me. She and I had, um, even though I've seen her in basically all of my, uh, the hypnosis workshops that, Courtney has facilitated. I have never once been paired up with her before. So we don't have history together. And so the, for this psychometry exercise, this was the first time we were um, paired up and having any one-on-one, -on -one, any type of one-on-one -on -one conversation. And, oh gosh, here's what she came up with. She's like, what I'm getting is this visual of you on the back of a motorcycle riding along a boardwalk by the ocean. <laughs> and there's a colorful scarf around your neck that's flowing in, in, in uh, flowing behind you, you know, around your neck that's flowing in the air. And then you just feel, you know, very free. And uh, what else did she say? And then she said, from there, she got another visual of, uh, what was it? Of, of like a, a blanket on a forest floor. And, that's, and then she's like, I, you know, that's all I have. I apologize. And I'm like, I'm going to interrupt and say it's uh, 111 right now. It's 111 Central Standard Time, angel number. Love it. Um, Thank you, universe. I'm just going to take in the love right now. Yeah, I think I've grown up uh, with the self-talk that I was insignificant and I don't think that's any 
<laughs> that's nothing to do with my upbringing. My parents definitely loved me. I, <clears throat> I don't know, you just have things that get planted in your head. Um, and coming into this whole journey that I've been on for the past year or so, it's just brought home how much each one of us is special and important and powerful and loved. We're so loved. So I hope you realize that. I hope you feel it. I really want you to feel that right now. And I guess I'm pausing also because I lost my place. <laughs> uh, okay, forest floor, I think is where we were. Okay, and so yeah, so she was apologizing. She said, it's been a while. And I'm like, oh my gosh, if this ring in my hand was a symbol of my essence, that is so beautiful how spirit, source, God showed you in one brief image like a lot of the things that are me, I love the ocean. I mean, and you know that now if you didn't already, because I just told you during the hypnosis session I had just experienced, I love the ocean. And um, I often will ride my, on the back of my husband's motorcycle. We had done that just the night before. And so it was still fresh on my memory. I love riding a motorcycle. It's just a sense of freedom, like the same feeling of freedom that you get riding a horse or a, riding in a boat. I love that, just on the waves. It kind of feels like a, a gallop in a way. Um, yeah, just that sense of freedom. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. So yeah, I, I had just been on a motorcycle the night before uh, I do love it. Um, and then, okay, so it was by the ocean. It was on the, I was on the back of the motorcycle. She, she mentioned the scarf, colorful scarf around my neck. And I was like, I am such a scarf person. I have a huge collection of scarves. Now I never wear them, <laughs> but I have them taking up space in my closet. <laughs> And I especially love colorful scarves, like ones that are, I don't know, a bit of a statement or just fun. I love fun scarves. So yeah, I have, a, I have a weakness for scarves and they're just collecting dust in my closet, but I love them. I have a weakness for them. Um, and then what else? The forest floor in the hypnosis session, we had, I just told you earlier about how I love the forest and I, you know, uh, that was my happy place that I went to <laughs> during my hypnosis session. And I explained that, you know, even in the Lord of the Rings movies and you have the, the queen of the forest, I am so bad with names. Okay, maybe I shouldn't say that because that's reinforcing a negative belief about myself, but I'll just say I can't remember right now uh, all of the names, but you know who I'm talking about, that elegant, lovely queen of the forest, the goddess of the forest. I so resonated with that. I love, I love that. <laughs> and so I was like, so cool how this one ring, you know, the energy was transmitted and you got all this download information about a complete stranger that you wouldn't have known but yet you trusted what came through and you told me about it and it definitely resonated and made sense to me so it was just i love it i love how courtney includes these at the end of all of her um, soul empowering hypnosis membership sessions because you do get that, wow, there's something to this. You matter. You are acknowledged. You are seen. And we're, all, we're connected. We are connected. And there's a beautiful truth that, that binds us all together and encourages us to, 
to work together in our own individual ways and methods uh, to create something very magical here on this earth. So I think that's about it for now. I would highly recommend you to go to payitforwardhypnosis.com, click on the membership tab and uh, try it out. See if you get the, the wisdom that you're looking for, that you're needing, and really experience for yourself how connected you are and how uninsignificant <laughs> you are in this life and what you mean to this mission. Okay, that's it. Love you. If you have any breakthroughs, like any aha moments where you're putting together dots that I haven't yet, feel free to email me. The email address for this show is the sandbox pod at gmail.com or you can text me my cell phone number is 281-844-8443 love you much until next time bye